All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the hyper column. And essentially the question says, what is a hyper column? So a hyper column is a set of columns that is responsive to lines of all orientations from a particular region in the visual field and viewed by both eyes. So there's really the definition of what a hyper column is. Set of columns responsive to lines of all orientation from a particular region in the visual field and viewed by both eyes. But what does the hyper column consist of? Well, the hyper column has ocular dominance columns, okay? That can be divided into a left ocular di dominance column that receives information from the left eye only and a right ocular dominance column which receives information from the right eye only. Uh, the columns are arranged so that they alternate between left and right. And I want to show that real quick before I go on. So here's a little picture diagram here of what a hyper column looks like and what you can see here is these are known as the ocular dominance columns these are them and look it's left eye right eye left eye right eye and just like I said they alternate left and right and by alternating left and right basically essentially the columns are arranged so that they alternate left and right bringing the inputs from both eyes so what they do is they bring the inputs from both eyes together at this particular level it winds up providing the basis for the sensation of depth perception. So really a lot of what these um, ocular dominance columns do and the way of bringing the inputs from the left and right eye together at this particular level results in the sensation of depth perception, okay, which is extremely important and we need it every day for driving or just navigating our environment. So that's what the ocular dominance columns are about. Now there's another set there's another part to the hypercolumn, and they're simple cells which, uh, with the same orientation preference, are grouped together into what are known as orientation columns. So simple cells with the same preference, with the same orientation preference, are grouped into, are grouped together into orientation columns, organized with an orderly shift in orientation preference. So what you can see over here is that these are the orientation columns. And if you can see, I don't know if this is too visible. Yeah, it's pretty visible. Um, you have slightly different angle. Each one, I think, changes by about 15 degrees, if I'm not mistaken. And it creates sort of like this pinwheel-like structure. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about next. So the orientation preference of neurons with simple receptive fields changes in a continuous fashion. That's what I was saying. It changes in an organized and orderly fashion by a set number of degrees. Each one of these um, columns responds to a line of different orientation, slightly different orientation. And um, what ends up happening here is it forms a pinwheel-like area. And the map of the orientation preference is then repeated for neurons with adjacent receptive fields. So essentially this hypercolumn really consists of two main parts. I mean it consists of the ocular dominance columns and the orientation columns. And they each provide a um, different role. One of them, in the case of the orientation columns, provides the depth perception sensation. And um, this is basically how the hypercolumn functions and how it works. And this is a, you know, a good diagram of basically what one of these hypercolumns looks like.